Welcome. We're uh, back with another episode of Coffee with April. This time we have a guest. Uh, he's been with us before, Victor from B Bros. Uh, we're going to talk about, or we're going to ask ourselves a question, which is a question that's been asked quite often in the specialty coffee industry. And this is, do we have to meet our farmers? Which is kind of a ridiculous question, to be fair, because the very short, simple answer there would be yes. But then maybe most importantly is when should we meet them? How often should we meet them? And what can you do versus being a, a tiny little startup that April technically is versus a, a really big company that has more or less a full-time green coffee employer um, employed, right? And with us here we have Victor because Victor has had his first ever yes. trip, right? Yeah. Which was pretty exciting, I think. We went to uh, basically the Esperanza farm in Minas Gerais, uh, which is just outside of Belo Horizonte in Brazil. Um, we visited Bruno, uh, a kind of a long time partner farmer here in um, uh, with April. We worked with him for two seasons. I've known him personally for five years and, and we're super excited to have his coffees. Um, Victor, we, we're gonna kind of start with you here now. And the question here is, do you look at coffee differently now, two days ago, <laughs> two days after coming home from this trip, like did, did this trip change anything for you? You've been in coffee for like two three, years now? Yeah, three, two, years. three years, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it definitely changed me in some ways, but most importantly, I think it made me more interested in coffee. Um, I've been working with different roasters and coffees and uh, origins and varieties. And uh, now that I've seen those and like in real life, it makes more sense to me. Um, uh, it, it feels more fun, and I can I can taste the difference in a different way. Uh, I think I can distinguish the coffees differently now. I think that uh, I have visually can memorize uh, these uh, attributes, and it makes more sense to me. Yeah, I mean, there, uh, there's one thing here, you know, a wash processed coffee, a, mm. a pulled natural, a, a full natural, and there's another thing being on the farm, uh, looking yeah. uh, or watching what that would mean for that specific farm, right? But what is the main kind of, is there any few major takeaways that surprised you over visiting a farm? Was there something that, oh, I didn't realize how much work this was, so I didn't realize, yeah. you know, how this actually was done? Yeah, well, I've, I've, I had a good understanding of how difficult is it to grow coffee, I think. I, I kind of have seen it on pictures, but it, in real life, you can actually see how much work, like months of work goes into, like getting a coffee bean into, uh, into the roastery. But um, what was so surprising is the amount of uh, like sorting that goes into from the from a harvested coffee into just grading it to the to being the specialty coffee. So it's uh, it's just a very small amount compared to the whole production of a farm, which is uh, was very surprising to me. I thought it was a bigger amount. Um, so that that was uh, yeah, I think that the main. Like a surprising yeah, fact, it's, a, it's a really interesting point because I think a lot of people believe that everything that grows on a on a coffee tree on a good farm is going to be specially coming mm. out off the tree, uh, and that's obviously not true, right? Yeah, it is not. Um, even if you do selective picking, there's still sometimes as as low as 20, 30 percent of that tree that is actually specialty coffee, and the rest wouldn't qualify it based on the the weather during growing season, uh, the amount of rain, the amount of temperatures and stuff like that, right? So there's so many factors moving into it that is yeah. that is difficult, right? Um, do, do you find it easier to, do, do you understand specialty coffee more now? That's a bit of a fluffy question, but do you feel that this has, has given you a, a better insight in, in in what we do in this mm. industry or the value of what we do? Or did you, did you feel you had a good uh, opinion or perspective on that before? Um, I think I have a better understanding now, or, or I feel I have. Um, I kind of had a good understanding of what specialty coffee is, and but I didn't realize like uh, what it actually like what it actually is, or how how does a specialty coffee become specialty? It's uh, because it you sort out the the bad beans and you only keep only the best ones and. Uh, and now I understand like why specialty they cost you know so much more because there is like a million times more work that goes into it. Mm, sure. um, so in that sense, I think it, I, I realize it now, and and I think more people will understand or 
perhaps consume specialty coffee, if they would understand the same way or they, they would actually see what is the difference between these two coffees and the, the difference is like huge. Also in terms of taste, but in terms of how much work goes into it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But I mean, on a, on a broader perspective, it's, it's, it's obviously going to a farm and, and seeing how things are done. Um, it's obviously the, the personal connection. I mean, we, we mm. stayed together with Bruno in, in his apartment for a few days. And I mean, that's a, you, you, you get to know the person properly, right? Which is, which is a really yeah. interesting personal yes. perspective on it, right? Um, on, a, on a broader scale, if we kind of switch back to, to April here, a question that I always kind of had, and, and personal in terms of my story, it took me, I was in coffee for like mm. four years before I visited the farm. Hmm. And I roasted coffee for three years before that actually happened. So I spent four kind of full years working full time in coffee without ever visiting a farm. Um, and then I visited a farm and, and did much changed with that. No, n not so much, to be honest, at hmm. least not for me personally, because I felt I'd spend so much time in a roastery that I kind of already knew. Uh, but I think what, when it became really interesting for me is when I started April, because with April, it took us basically two years before our first uh, farm visit. Right. Um, and I see a lot of people now starting roasteries, and the first thing they do is they buy like 10 tickets to go to 10 different farms around the world, more like some kind of sightseeing trip, right? Nothing wrong with that, but the policy that we push here at April is that we visit the farmers we're buying from. So we go to Brazil, yeah. and then we hang out with one farmer at one farm, right? We don't visit 10 farmers. We don't do a, a trip where it's one day at each farm. We go to the farmer we buy from mm. because that feels more sustainable. Uh, it feels more more honest. And to be fair, our only focus is how can we make better coffee at that farm, right? But most importantly, with April, it took us basically two years to realize who do we want to buy from, mm. right? Um, so I mean, a, a good example now with our. Um, kind of partner farm in Ecuador that we started to work with Lassie since all of a sudden I got a phone call last week saying that um, they basically sold their farm. <laughs> so all of that kind of initial work would have been lost if we mm. went there with just a bunch of videos and we started to promote it, right? So mm. we, we started visiting our farms frequently and work with them uh, more closer when we know that they are as committed to us as we are committed to them, right? Sure. Uh, focusing on this being, um, way more long term, hmm. which is also a lot more interesting, right? So, long story short, should you visit the farmers? Of, of course, you could because it's a personal thing, right? It's um, it's about growing together with others, and you need to know them. You need to see what they do with their business um, for it to make sense to do that. Should you visit all the farmers? Should you visit farmers you don't buy from? Well, that's an individual thing, right? Here at April, for example, we won't do that. We're only going to visit the farmers that we hmm. actually do work with. Um, I often also get, get asked, and I know Victor hasn't started competed yet, but it will come, <laughs> uh, you will see. But that's also a very common thing, like do, do I have to, to, to win a competition, mm. I have to go and visit the farm? That's yep. something a lot of people say. I mean, that's utterly bullshit, because um, you don't have to. Does mm. it make your performance better? Not necessarily, right? I mean, competing is about the quality of the cups you serve, not necessarily how much money you have in terms of visiting farms. Um, but to kind of sum this up, and back to bean roast a bit as well, um, at least we're trying to push a little bit of a micro lot um, up ahead sometime. Yeah, <laughs> like we taste a lot of different coffees and Bruno is a, like a good example of a farmer who's pushing forward and he's experimenting with uh, different fermentations and different micro lots. So I think uh, we tasted quite a lot of coffees and one would be a very good example to uh, showcase to our subscribers as well too to show it because we haven't featured any Brazilian coffees, for example. So it could be a, a first uh, a first feature on the region because it's a big uh, coffee producing country, but we never actually bought any coffee from there. So, Well, for uh, sure. And I think it's very fair to say that, that there's a huge misconception mm. when it comes to Brazilian coffee. No, I had right? that too. Uh, yeah. So it's like that Brazilian coffee is better than what you think. <laughs> uh, it's just that you're trying shit Brazilian coffee where you could be trying good Brazilian coffee. Yeah. Right? And and we're hoping to be able to, to feature that. Uh, but long story short, and to kind of summon this up, um, so Victor, do you believe people, should everyone in this industry visit a farm, and will that make this industry better? I would say yes. yes. If, if you work in the industry, I think it helps a lot, and also you have a different perspective in the future when you work with farmers and uh, you have a, 
you have a better understanding of, uh, of their work and you appreciate the, the coffees when you receive it in your roastery. Uh, I think better, like you actually, uh, there's a lot of work that goes into each bag of coffee. So uh, I would say yes, but uh, if, yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I mean, I, I think so too. I think perhaps you should, you should be a bit organized your first trip because mm, yeah, it can be yeah. a bit difficult to just randomly go and, and hang out at a farm. Um, if you really want to kind of maximize what you get out of it. Personally, I would recommend to not, I mean, importer trips are nice, uh, but they're not necessarily so much focused on, on creating long-term relationship. Uh, so I would definitely recommend to, to do similar to what we do as we go and we spend one week at one farm mm. rather than seeing 10 different farms, which I know can be interesting, but for the kind of long-term perspective, um, do that. So if you want to visit more farms in the same country, then just do more trips, more mm. or less. Right? Yeah. Uh, cool, that, I think that was about it. Do yeah. we have more to say? Do uh, you feel we have more to say? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> buy, the, buy BMO's coffee. No. Like sign up to the subscription, we can say that. Sign up to our subscription as well though, by the way, which we will we'll be featuring some of the um, uh, Bruno Pres Esperanza coffee. Later this at year. At one point, later this year, I'll say mm. for sure. Uh, as always, um, comment down here if you have any questions. Uh, if you have any thoughts on just, you know, how do, how do I get to visit a farm? I mean, write it down here and we'll probably can answer that in some kind of capacity. Uh, thank you guys for watching, as always.